19 features everyone wants in the Minecraft Wild Update. Minecraft Swamps are set for a big overhaul in the new 1.19 Wild Update. And in that case, here's some of the fan favorite features that could fit right in with the new stuff. And hey, to prepare for the deep dark, the YouTube warden challenges you to subscribe to the channel with your eyes closed. So take a leap of faith to that red sub button below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number one, while building in Minecraft, more block types is always a plus. And on top of that, it's especially great to have different variations of textures that we already use. So if we've got mossy and cracked variations for our bricks, what if there was an equivalent for our wood types? Think about it, a swamp would be the perfect place to introduce mossy or even rotten versions of our wooden blocks. And with that, not only would we have a way for the witch hut to fit in more with its surroundings, but we could also have a whole new spectrum of blocks to play with, which most importantly, helps the world feel lived in and interactive, and I think that's just great. Number two, with the addition of potion tipped arrows in 1.9, Mojang gave another way to add magic to our tools, which is great, but I say, why stop at arrows? And the potential for potion tipped swords could be a cool alternative to see. Now, the way that I see this working is that after you coat a tool in a potion, it have some kind of secondary durability bar that would let you know how many uses that potion has. And then after you use a poison slash on an enemy, it would use both the tool's durability as well as that potion coat. And while this would definitely need workshopping to make sure that it's balanced and not grossly overpowered, I think that concept might be worth exploring. Number three, let's face it, the swamps are not the most intimidating. After all, since most of the monsters can't easily swim, all it takes is one boat, and we can get out of danger easier than most of the other biomes. So to balance that out and give us another mob to boot, alligators might be the perfect candidate. These creatures not only fit in with the Everglades aesthetics, but they'd also offer quite the challenge for anyone entering their territory. And hey, in real life, these things can both swim fast and occasionally attack boats. So maybe they could do the same here. And then it would be that if you want to risk it, you travel through the water or otherwise stick to the land monsters that you're used to. Number four, in the 1.14 update, villagers got a big overhaul. And with that came different textures for biome variants, including swamp and jungle. But since those last two can't have their own villages, you probably don't see them too often. So why don't we start by at least putting the swampy someones on display? And really plenty of tremendous builders have already taken a stab at making their own swamp village concepts. So the groundwork's already there. Plus we've already got witches huts spawning as structures anyway, so adding villagers into the mix would be a neat bit of world building, especially when you consider that villagers themselves can become witches. And truthfully, I'd love to see this realized just so we get to see more of this texture. It's that good. Number five. Now, this is a feature I think we've all imagined at some point, because it makes sense that if we can break slimes apart, there'd be some way for them to join back together. And not only would this be a logical fit, but I think this feature would also add an additional amount of challenge to fighting slimes, since right now the optimal strategy is to break apart the big ones and then clean up the littles afterward. However, if the tiny slimes had it in their AI to prioritize merging back together, that would keep the tension high even when they can't hurt you. And it only takes one look at Phoenix SC's concept to see just how cool this could be. Number six, maybe it's just me, but swimming around in a swamp does not seem kosher. And we'll look at the gross underwater tint will show as much. So what if instead the water was as hazardous as it looked? I mean, since swamp water isn't exactly safe in real life, it might be fitting to add some kind of detriment for swimming around for too long. Maybe it happens like the powdered snow effect where a border sets in and then you start taking poison or sickness damage. And while I don't think that this should be a big threat to the player, it would incentivize better forms of travel such as lily pad parkour or boating, both of which seem better for Steve's health anyway. Number seven, if you're interested in the technical side of Minecraft, you've definitely considered building a slime farm. But to even break dirt on that project, we need to find a slime chunk, and that's a hassle and a half. Truth be told, you could do this in vanilla with a painstaking search process, but most of us just use online tools to find it from the seed, and both I think are a bit ridiculous. So why not have some intentional tool to help us find the slime chunks in game. And whether that's as simple as something in the F3 menu, or more intricate like the quark mod slime in a bucket, I think there are enough concepts out there that justify putting this in the game. Number eight, if you've ever switched between the two versions of Minecraft, then you're well aware that Java and Bedrock don't always line up. And as Mojang gradually brings the Java features over to Bedrock, and vice versa, I'd like to suggest this one going forward. See, in Bedrock, we're able to put our potions into our cauldrons like so, which is not only handy for storage, but it also gives us a bunch of different variations of the block to use in our base. So understandably, it'd be nice to see this mirrored for the Java players. But while we sadly won't get the glitch for dripstone potion farms, I think just having this feature by itself would do a lot for witch huts in the future. Number nine, after seeing the 1.17 updates implementation of wax and copper blocks, it's got some of us thinking, what if we could do this with pistons? Think about it, we're currently able to use a honeycomb to change a copper block state, so it'd fit in if we could use a slime ball to change a regular piston to a sticky one. Then it'd be even better to automate this process using 
using dispensers, letting it use either a slime ball or an axe to do or undo the process respectively. And I'm no redstone whiz, but I can already imagine the community finding many cool ways to use that functionality. And it's the kind of sticky situation we'd all appreciate. Number 10. Now, if you've got a passing familiarity with wetlands, then you're probably familiar with the concept of peat. That is, turf that's made from a bunch of partially decayed vegetation and matter. And more importantly, folks, this stuff is very good for heating, and it's commonly used as a substitute for firewood. And to me, that sounds like a perfect candidate for our swamp-based smelting. And to its credit, the forestry mod already lays out the blueprint for this by having peat as a fuel source for an engine. So for a more simple and vanilla approach, maybe this could be used as an ultra-potent fuel that early game players could substitute in while they're down in the bog. And if anything, it's a reward for coming down to the swamps in the first place. Number 11. Potions can be a very worthwhile asset while exploring your world. But even though they're useful, I'd still venture that most of us don't use them nearly enough. And that could in part be because brewing itself is something of a letdown, especially when compared to the more robust system that we have for enchanting. Which is why I think a revamp for the swamps could also bring with it a shakeup to the current brewing system. And while there are mods full of ideas for new potion and status effect features, I'd also settle for getting some smaller quality of life things. So whether that's letting brewing stands give EXP like furnaces, or letting map makers change the potion recipes with data packs, I think it'd all be worthwhile. Number 12. Vegetation can go a long way into detailing a build. And if you ask me, the swamps do not offer nearly enough in that category. So to resolve that, it might make sense to add some more water-faring plants to our worlds. And while I think the concepts for cattails look great, it's this algae feature from the Bayou Blues team that really caught my eye here. With this, we not only have another plant like lily pads to grow in place along the water, but then we could also harvest it to make a special kind of thatch. And hey, maybe that'd be our way that we get ourselves some green stairs and slabs to play with, which I'd love to see. Number 13. As I'm sure you know, witches come from villagers, and you'll see as much in a thunderstorm. But while our NPC companions can become these baddies, they can't change back. Which I'll admit seems odd, given that we can take them from the undead back to the living using just a golden apple and a potion. So with that, it only seems fair to add in some way for our witches to become redeemed as well. And hey, maybe with the addition of copper lightning rods in 1.17, we could use lightning striking twice to flip that switch back. But regardless of the curing method, it might be nice that if this can happen randomly, we'd have a say in undoing it as well. Number 14. It doesn't take much time to learn that slime blocks have a bounce of behavior. And while that's true, it's a bit limited. See, even though honey blocks are sticky along their sides as well as the top, slime blocks are one face only. And I think that's a missed opportunity. So as an alternative, maybe slime blocks could be brought up to speed and bounce items off the side as well. After all, they can do this in the quark mod, and it seems to work well there. Plus, who knows, maybe some extra bounciness is just what some builds will need. And just saying, I'd personally like to have some way to build this machine without needing the silk touch for the ice blocks. Number 15. When it comes to Minecraft's vehicles, we've got the boat and we got the minecart. And between those two, the minecart definitely seems to be Mojang's favorite. After all, look at all these cart types, and the only variation that we have for boats is the wood that we use while crafting. And I think we could do better. So while Mojang already mentioned boats with chests in the biome vote, that's just scratching the surface. So while we're at it, why not add in furnaces for motors, or extra planks for a four-seater? Plus, this could be the prime time to let us place banners inside of the rafts and make our own kind of sailboats, all of which would be much appreciated, I'm sure. Number 16. Okay, now I'll be the first to admit that I usually find fog to be annoying in Minecraft. Whether it's in the water, the nether, or even the previous void fog, it's usually a feature I can do with that. But at the same time, it goes hand in hand with swamps as we know them. So I think it's worth considering, and maybe with some extra care to make sure it's not that frustrating. For one, I think the looks will play a huge part for the player perception. Meaning if you can take screenshots of your base in the bog that look like this instead of this, I think plenty of people will hop on board. And frankly, it would offer both a unique aesthetic and an obstacle to the biome, both of which give it personality. Number 17. If you've walked around the various swamp biomes, then you've definitely noticed some fungus among us. And in bedrock, that's a lot more obvious. So since these wetlands are home to a fair amount of fungi, I think it's only fair to bring Java up to speed and add big mushrooms here as well. Think about it, the conditions for a swamp are as close to perfect for a mushroom as you can get. And at the very least, it should be on par with the dark forests. So while this could do its part to offer more food in the biome, I also think it'd be nice to have another splash of color to add to the drab ones we have. Number 18. Look, I love redstone flying machines, but even I have to admit that they're not always the prettiest. So one way that we might be able to bring our materials into the aesthetic era is through the advent of dyed slime. And while I would personally love to see an implementation as cool as Seth Bling's colorful slime blocks, I'd even take them if they didn't pave any differently. And with the ability to choose between 16 different colors of dye, we could add a lot of variety to the different flying houses we're moving around. Or maybe it would even just be nice to add some color coding to our redstone circuits. Either way, I think there's territory here that's just begging to be explored. And hopefully, Mojang lets us do that. Number 19. 
game. Sustainability is a large part of the Minecraft survival roadmap, especially late game, which means that players are always looking for new ways to farm and mass produce each item that's introduced. And with that, I'm surprised that lily pads haven't joined the roster. Now, I get it, they're not exactly the most useful material, but if you need a lot of them, there's not a good way to tip the scales. And honestly, I get the bulk of mine just as junk from a fish farm. So in addition to that, why not take after sea pickles and perhaps let us bone meal lily pads to spread them more. That way we're not disrupting what's already in place, but if you need a bunch, it's also possible. And with that folks, have a good one, all right?